can just <laughs> this is technology, but it's fine. Um, we're just hearing from this. We've got wonderful people that's backing us up and giving us feedback constantly. I'm looking at the screen here, but um, I trust that I sound fine now. Can you, tell me? Can you just show a thumbs up? Maybe uh, in the section, I know it's a delay. Thank you very much. I'm going to start over because I believe many of you thought I turned into a chipmunk or I had some, something to suck before I started the session. It's great to chat to you, and thank you for the tremendous feedback that I got yesterday. Um, we are going to continue with the session as it is. Maybe we're going to go five minutes over if it's okay with you, but it's not, it's not a time thing. It's being together. Number one, I want to challenge you with a mindset, because as you think you are, my question right now is how do you think right now? I had a choice right now to go into, oh, it's not working, I'm sounding like a chipmunk, and, and what should I do? And, and I could immediately add a tension driving in, driving in me and caused me to become concerned because there's so many people that I'm responsible for right now at this moment. However, what would that have helped me? Zero. So it's my choice to remain calm in the face of any situation. That's my choice. So at this moment, I would like you to just think about what your mindset is. Now, I'm going to challenge you. When you're with somebody in a room, um, if, even if you're alone, you can speak. Because a mindset is not thinking. A mindset is created by what you speak. So you create a mindset by speaking. So I'm going to ask you right now, you turn to the person next to you, if you're family with many children, you speak to one person, you say, can I ask you a question? And then the person is going to say yes. Now, if you're alone, you speak to yourself. You say, can I ask you a question? Then you say, it's a joke, but it's funny. You have time and fun with yourself. Then you say, yes, for sure. Then you ask the person, at this moment right now, what are you grateful for? Some of you are going to say, I'm grateful Yanni doesn't sound like a chipmunk anymore because I thought my hearing. But that's, that's only the joke, but for you, what are you grateful for right now? I give you 10 seconds. Go for it. Okay. It's eight seconds, but it was enough. Because right now, I'm asking you, did it come easy? Yes or no? Did your thought and speaking of what you're grateful for come easy or did you have to think about this because if you had to think about this it means you haven't practiced gratitude and gratitude is one of the toughest mindset that anyone can have on this earth because if you're grateful you can't have an excuse if you're grateful you don't you're not a victim if you're grateful gratitude is one of the strongest thoughts and um, characteristics that you can carry in you and gratitude is the sign of a champion but gratitude is something that you've got to practice so if today was a bit of a challenge do it more because tomorrow when i ask you what are you grateful for you're going to name those things because they are fresh in your mind you've spoken them you've you've got them so that's for the mindset the rules for this game or for this forum is I have a notebook, not a piece of paper. A piece of paper is okay, but you're going to feel much better if you have a small notebook. If you can't buy a notebook during this period of in time, then a piece of paper is fine. It's not about right or wrong. It's about what's going to make you feel best. That's it. It's a choice you've got to make is, what are going to make you feel special? Um, when I was still a chipmunk, I said, Kate Riley, I don't know whether you're on at this moment. I want to welcome you from Swaziland. I know that you stopped the whole meeting and just to sh share in this uh, forum. And the people from the UK, sorry, my apologies. I wanted to invite you first, but my mind was a little bit rushed after I got back. So that's fine. But welcome in any case. I'm taking deep breaths. 
So at this moment, I trust that every one of you got a pen and paper. Because when I say something during this forum, doesn't matter whether you're a child, or whether you're old, or whether you're educated, doesn't matter whether you're very old. It doesn't take away the fact that you've got to live in the arena of life instead of being a spectator. Spectators say, I will watch what other people do. I will be comfortable. I will, it's not that important for me. But being a spectator of life robs you from the adrenaline of being in the arena. And yesterday I said this to you. So many of us, when we go in the arena, very little times of our lives, that means when we set ourselves up for uh, a moment of embarrassment, maybe speaking to a group of people or uh, playing a game of sport or engaging in uh, something that's uncomfortable. That's the few times that many of us get into the arena. The rest of the time we stand outside because we are constantly being aware of people watching us. Now, what if it doesn't matter what people watching you is going to think? What if your life becomes so important that you've got to be in this arena and everything that you do, you've got to be so wary about it and so sharp and know where to see opportunities that you don't have time to wonder what people think? Will life not be totally different? What if you stop wondering what people will think about you and you live purposefully, your goal, your, your passion, and you're part of a team. I'm going to speak about that today, but you've got to make notes because after the session, you're going to experience what it is to be part of the game because somebody's going to ask you, can I ask you a favor? Or can I ask you a question? And you're going to say, yes, for sure. Then the person is going to say, what have you learned today? And then you've got to speak in the first person. You can't say, we have to, or somebody, or you have to. You, you, is not me. I'm not going to listen to what you're telling me because I need to decide for myself. Motivation comes from me within, not from without. Yes, that can be a factor for many people, but it will never last unless it comes from within. So if you say, I will. I have to, I'm going to, then something changed within you. So after this session, you're going to speak and you're going to be the first person speaking about what you've learned and you're going to say my name. Now, yesterday I challenged you. This morning I got an email, a WhatsApp from somebody. And he said, Yanni, after you said yesterday when you read in the Bible and you put your name in there, I was thinking, I can't do that. I'm not. That Bible is written for other people. But suddenly I realized, but what is that word meaning to me then? And he put his name in and he said he sat there this morning with goosebumps all over him. Because suddenly he experienced the personal responsibility of this word that's for him. Not as you read it is written there. So that's a great challenge, and I trust all of you will practice this because the more you do something, the better you become. I have great news because yesterday we got so many requests about the video available, available on, on YouTube because some people are working and they can't watch this session right now. And we've had a couple of people requesting whether we can put the video live um, um, until and, and most of you are paying the 250 rand for the week and I don't want to yes I said if you don't have the means it's fine you can join it doesn't matter it's not about the money but some people said they feel guilty watching if they don't pay now guilt doesn't come from freedom guilt is something that's placed upon you this is my work. That's why I said after the two weeks I did for free um, and I negotiate with people, and I said, if a family or whoever locks in can pay me 250 rand, it's my way of income, you're welcome. We will make the session available until 8 o'clock tonight. So it's going to be on YouTube. I don't know how all these things work, but it's going to be available until 8 o'clock tonight. If somebody comes from work, they can watch it and they can get on the same page as you are. So we're going to put that on YouTube. 
until tonight. And then we're going to make it private and then we will have this available for later publication or wherever. I, I've got no idea. I want to thank Field Furi, young man who approached us. And for those of you who joined last part, part of the first two weeks, I spoke about fear. We're going to speak about that again. But you never confront a fear without proper guidance. Because if you, mis if you made a mistake the first time and you got injured, that's why most people experience fear because you tried something, you failed, and then the fear crept in and you avoid that for the rest of your life. And it becomes a burden in your life. It becomes like an uh, anchor keeping you stuck and you can't go out and, and explore. Fear is literally an anchor that has so many people stuck. And last week we spoke about the power of fear and how to overcome fear. And the fourth step, was it the fourth step? No, the third step. The third step was to confront your fear. That means if there's a fire and you want to kill the fire, jump on the fire. But you don't jump on the fire if you haven't learned how to jump on a fire, how to smother. You don't jump on the fire without a blanket. I mean, that's stupid. So you can't confront the fear in, idiot, in stupidity. Then you're going to get hurt and you're going to increase in your fear. Get advice from somebody. So... Everybody of us, every one of us needs some guidance in life. Somewhere we're going to fail. But remember this. Never take guidance from somebody who has not succeeded. Because he can't give you the advice how to succeed. So feel free. You approached us. And you helped us set us up this YouTube channel and YouTube, everything, and all these things. That's why for me to stress out about with my chipmunk sound, not going to help me because I'm not going to know what to do. I just have to start over again. And that's all I can do. So that's the relief I have. And Phil, thank you for phoning us and telling us that we sound, I'm sounding like a chipmunk. I want to get to the theme for today because I said I'm going to challenge you yesterday. I'm going to share a bit about my experience with the Golden Lions rugby team. For those of you who don't know, in 2015, Johan Ackerman phoned me. By the end of, close to the end, second two games to go, to the end of the Super 14, uh, Super 16, uh, that, uh, 15 that time, um, uh, challenge. And he said, Yanni, the Lions are playing against the Waratahs on Saturday and they've got a mental block because they haven't beaten them in nine years or six years or nine years. I think. And he said, can you come and work with the team because we need to break this. Uh, I'm not going to share with you all my thoughts, but the, the end result was I had one session with the team. We connected immediately. And that Saturday, 1.30.12. Sunday, one phoned me. And he said, Johnny, the players ask whether we can work together going forward. And that's how my trip with the Lions started. And it was absolutely amazing. What I want to share with you today is when I started working with the Lions, there was not one Springbok in that team. As a matter of fact, I had the session and I asked him, who's the Lions? And one of the players, Kortnil Skosan, jokingly said, Umjani, we are the outcasts from all the other unions. We are the players that doesn't get contracts. And I can remember, for those of you who know, we called him Soaps. His name is Franco Morstead. He played lock in the World Cup that we won last, this year. Last year. Last year. Franco Morstead sat there and he smiled because he was playing lock, but he was not the size of, natural size of a lock. He was a young Boosinki that comes from Brits. And he sat there and he smiled because what Portnell said was so true. The reality was they were the losing team. They were lost on the log and they had this empty, empty space. They couldn't lose because they were lost. But suddenly they won that match and we started with something. And that's what I want to challenge you today is what happened amongst the Lions is not that they grew physically. 
they were the same players physically. But they got united as a team. And a thing happened amongst them. We call it synergy. And last week I spoke about synergy, but I can never st stop speaking about it because the more I speak it, the more it makes sense in my own life. Synergy can be defined as the following. If I can lift 20 kilograms by myself, and you can lift 20 kilograms by yourself. How much will we together be able to lift? Most of you think, okay, that's common sense, Yanni. 40 kilograms. You're wrong. Because the moment we work together, that means we get in synergy, agreeing upon a goal, agreeing where we want to do those to do something. We can, now it's not a fact, but we can lift more than we can on our own. That means instead of 40 kilograms, we will be able to lift 50 kilograms simply because we work together. That's synergy. The goal of any sports team, the goal of any business, is not for people to have talented people working in the business. Because talent will not make you the champion. Yes, talent will make a difference. But synergy will always beat a more talented team if the talented team are not a, is not in synergy. A team that's in synergy has far more power. And let me tell you, for those of you who believe in God, I told you, if you don't, you're right. Because you, there's no God for you. But I believe in God, so I read his word. And in Deuteronomy, I just said that, you've got it. Deuteronomy <laughs> 32, it's written. One can put a thousand to flight. Two can put 10,000 to flight. That's the definition of synergy. When we work together, we can do far more than we can on our own. How many players in the Lions rugby team became Springboks? And they didn't become Springboks because of their talent, their individual talent. They became Springboks because Synergy exalted them to a platform where they, in their minds, started to think differently about themselves. That's the power of synergy. Synergy can exalt you to a place where you on your own would never have been able to go had you been on your own. So we are part of a team. The moment you open your eyes, you're part of a team, and that team is called family. Question, is your family in synergy? Are you agreeing? Or is your family a couple of bunch of individuals, everybody for himself? Because you can be extremely talented, you can get along. What's your business? Is your business a bunch of talented people? But there's no synergy because how do you develop synergy? Last week I had a businessman phoned me and he said to me, Yanni, can you work with my team via Zoom uh, and create synergy? And I said to him, yes, that's my absolute job. That's, that's what I'm good at because I've spent so many years to know that synergy is not something that happens today and you've got it. Synergy is something you work on every day. A family can stand in synergy today. Tomorrow the family can be divided like amazing. You can't understand what happened. Because synergy is not something that's fixed. Some synergy is an energy that you've got to work on every day. So for today, I'm going to challenge you. And one of my friends is an Afrikaans firm. He and his family is in, a in an incredible place. But we spoke about it and they we, we as a family, every morning, my wife sat next to me. Um, synergy amongst us has increased dramatically since yesterday. I wish I can share everything with you, but the time is limited. Um, we as a family have synergy meeting every morning. So that means we don't start our day with us without us connecting. 
We can't start today without us connecting. Now, we never knew what we were doing. We just did it. But eventually, the result of this was so tremendous that people asking us, why are your children so respectful towards you? Where does this happiness in your home come from? Is it always like this in your home? I say, yes, we don't know anything else. And then we realized, as I was thinking, it's because we practice this every day. So if you as a family sit there, and the challenge for the next two weeks is going to be mentally tough, but it's not going to be mentally tough on an individual basis for yourself because you will, be, you will reach your limit as an individual, and that's, that's average. Let me tell you that's average. There's many people who's got talent, and you will always be equal. But if you're part of a team that is in synergy, your growth will even surprise you because you will become what on your own you would never have become unless you were part of a synergy group. And that's family. So my challenge for you is to, number one, get in agreement. This means after the session, if you sit there as a family, you're going to ask each other, do we want to be individuals in this home or are each of us really hungry to go to a, a level that we never know unless we stand in agreement, unless we work together. And I promise you only a fool will say, no, I just want to be individually. If you're clever, you say, no, we stand in agreement. And then we're going to lodge out this family challenge. It's a step-up challenge. That's for today. A step-up challenge, we started a new step-up challenge. We've got the same thing every morning. So um, we come and at this moment, one of us, tomorrow morning, play a song. So when we sit together and we, we chat and we pray, one of us have the, the freedom to share his song. Because if every one of us share a song, it's going to take too long. So one person brings his song, and we sit and we listen. Then every one of us bring um, a poem that we've written this day. Yeah, my book is full of poems, and I'm so proud of these poems that I've written. I keep them in my book, and maybe I, maybe one day this become published, because what a time in history. But we read to each other our poems, but the synergy is determined by the agreement. That means not the fact that we share, the fact that we agree. And I hope you hear the key. So... We've got this challenge from my friend. He said, everyone in our family has got two days to challenge every other member in, in the family to do something in that two days. So you've got two days to complete the challenge. So it's a step-up challenge. It is something of excellence. And remember, if you go into this step-up challenge, you choose where you start. You can start with the youngest. You can start with the oldest. You can play Paper, rock, paper, scissors, you can, uh, that's the way you choose somebody. No, there's no rule. But everybody's got two days to challenge the rest of the family. My daughter started yesterday with a new challenge, and the new challenge is every one of us has got to make it. My wife is usually making the gourmet dishes every night, so she said, no, it's not mom. Every one of us needs to make a gourmet dish every evening, and we're going to sit together, and we're going to cheer and inspire, and listen to that person, uh, look at that person, and just encourage that person to do it. Now, I tell you, we've had the most amazing dish last night that my daughter made, because the synergy in our home was incredible. You can have many other challenges. I mean, it doesn't have to be something, a task. You can just say, we're going to sit tomorrow, and everybody's got to come and share the best book they've ever read. Why? So you just say, I want to say this, but now I get to a rule because we come to the end of our session and our time, and I'm, I'm going to continue two minutes. My apologies for the people who have to leave it off by 12, but the chipmunk just um, interfered this morning a little bit. Very, very important. You have to understand the key to synergy is empowerment. That means if any member in the family tell the rest of the family what his challenge is, and you sit there and you say, oh, no, don't ask me to do it. You have just 
kill the whole thing. Because you've just robbed that person from his enthusiasm and his courage to expose himself, to share what he thinks is important with your shitty attitude. In synergy, we have to cover each other. You can never go on to personal feeling and put it above the synergy feeling. Personal feeling always step back. You encourage, you agree, you say, yes, I'm in. I'm going to do it even if it's the most difficult thing you do. You say, I'm in because you challenge me. And I'm thinking to the young children here because you so easily go, ah, I don't want to do that. Oh, don't give me that. That's the moment you kill synergy. Your role in the home is to create synergy. Not your parents. Every child's role, role in the home is to create synergy. Agree. So I'm looking forward to hear what challenges you're going to come up with. Because I want to invite you to share it via email. What challenges you have, and maybe we can have time where we're going to share these challenges and we will challenge each other to step up to a new level of excellence in our own lives and live in synergy that we will all be become more than we would have been had we just lived like normal people, being average, everyone for himself. So I thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience and thank you for rejoining. Thank you to my amazing wife for having the finger thing going and send out the email and send out the link so quickly. It's awesome to work in synergy. And I bless you all with an amazing day. And this video will be available until tonight, 8 o'clock. If somebody in your family is not there and you want them to see, you can just take them. It's going to be public. I think it's public. That means the whole world can watch. Um, I'm learning a lot. But we blessed. I'm looking forward to chatting to you tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going to challenge you with a step up personally. Um, but have a super day and be blessed.